All right, this is part seven. Lifo, fifo, what? Assumptions, assumptions, assumptions. So, as we looked at in the last video, Carl has now decided to become a merchandising business, which means he buys inventory, sells inventory, in an attempt to sell the inventory for more than he paid for it, and, as a result, earn a profit. But there's this provides some interesting issues. Okay, So one of the things that we have to deal with is the fact that inventory prices that Carl is going to pay are not always going to stay the same. So he bought his first inventory purchase right for 30 bucks and he because he had those two returns in the last video he ended the month of June with two paddles. Those two paddles had a cost to him of 30 bucks. So in July, he buys some more. July 2nd, he orders two more paddles, 40 bucks a piece. On July 8th, he orders four more paddles, $42. Price has gone up. And then by July 12th, he orders two more, and the price is going up again. These paddles must be in high demand. So, in total, during the month of July, these are his only purchases. He has goods available for sale. He has 10 paddles, and those 10 paddles have a total cost, if you add up all the individual costs, of $398. So you can look at it this way, too. Okay, Beginning inventory was two units, so the number of units, or what sometimes we call the quantity, the cost per unit, and then sometimes we call that the price, and then finally the total cost here is the two units times the 30 bucks is $60 total cost. Two units times 40 is $80. Four times 42 is 168. And two times 45 is 90. So the total 10 units, 398 in total cost. Okay? So you can look at it in the form of a spreadsheet or a table. Sometimes that's that's helpful. Okay? Now, customer comes in wants to buy two paddles what's the cost of the goods sold for Carl now if Carl organizes his shop like this which is a random picture I found on the internet he stacks all these paddles together and they're all the same so which paddles did Carl sell if Carl is unable to identify specifically which paddles he sold, then he is unable to determine what he paid for those paddles. And a lot of times this is the case, right? All these paddles in this this rack here, uh, they may have cost different amounts, but they're all together and they're all the same. So it's hard to identify specifically what the company paid for an individual paddle. As a result, Carl cannot identify the specific cost of goods sold for the sale. In order, though, to abide by the matching principle or the expense recognition principle, he has to expense the cost of the paddles against the revenue he earned from selling them, just like we looked at in the last video. So, we have some new accounting assumptions that we have to learn about. If a company is unable to identify the specific cost of items that they sold, it must select a cost flow assumption in order to determine cost of goods sold. We have three cost flow assumptions that your textbook, uh, not your textbook, but three cost flow assumptions that generally are used. Okay, There are other ways to do inventory accounting. But these are the big ones. So, first in, first out, last in, first out, and weighted average cost. These are what we call cost flow assumptions. Now, there are some industries that it's very easy to identify specifically how much it cost for an item that was sold. For example, a car dealer 
would know which car it sold. There is a specific identification number or a VIN number, vehicle identification number, that is on the car, and the dealer would know what they paid for that car. So when they sell that car, it's not hard to do, not hard to figure out, right? That's called specific identification. But in a lot of cases, like Carl's case here, uh, we can't really do that. So, first in, first out, whenever I think of this, uh, I think of a, an American tale. I don't know how many of you guys know this movie or not, but the main character, who's a mouse, right? His name's Fivel. So I always think of Fivel and Fivel. Yeah, it gets kind of confusing. That's kind of random, but never mind. So, FIFO, first in, first out, is the conveyor belt assumption. So when you have a conveyor belt, right, the first item you put on there is the first item that comes off. Okay, And so the oldest items are expensed first. The first ones in the queue are the first ones to come out. So in the case of this situation, right, if this guy buys two paddles, which two paddles are we going to say he purchased? It doesn't mean those were the two paddles he actually purchased. But we're going to say that's what he purchased. The two that were at the beginning inventory. So my cost of goods sold would be $60. And the ending inventory would be 338 be everything else that's left over. Okay. LIFO, or last in, first out. Okay, this is the cookie jar assumption. You guys have cookie jars, or maybe you know what cookie jars are, but you don't really have a cookie jar. I don't have a cookie jar. I wish I did. Anyway, cookie jar, right? You fill it up, okay, and the first one you take out was the last one you put in because it's on top, right? So, newest items are expensed first. So in this case, right, if we were stacking these ores, paddles up in a cookie jar, right, which would be the ones on top? Well, those would be the ones at the bottom, right? So his cost of goods sold, July 12th, the most recent purchase. We would say he bought these two paddles. We don't know if that's actually the case or not, but that's the assumption that we're taking. Okay? So our cost of goods sold would be $90 in this case. And ending inventory would be 308, right? Everything else left over. Weighted average cost is a little bit different. Okay, I like to think of this as the ball pit assumption. You guys kind of know what ball pits are, right? Uh, they're pretty fun to jump in if you have kids. Or if you're not. We expense the average cost of the paddles. Okay, average cost. So we kind of mix it all together. That's kind of why I call it, consider it the ball pit assumption, right? We mix it all together. So we have all of these paddles. They have different costs. So we got to figure out what's the average cost. Okay. So goods available for sale. We have 10 paddles to sell. $398 total. So the total cost of all paddles in inventory during the period was $398. We divide it by the total number of paddles, which is 10. And that tells me the average cost is $39.80. Average cost per paddle. So, I just put that cost on all my paddles. That's my average cost for the period. So when I sell these paddles okay, to the guy who came in to buy two of them, I consider that cost of goods sold uh, $39.80 for each paddle. So we get a total cost of goods sold of $79.80. 60 we add those two together and then ending inventory is 318.40 it's the remainder of what we have left all added together okay so three different ways we can do this when we don't know specifically which item we sold now this creates some issues we need to look at okay so this spreadsheet here says the units right some of them we sold, and some of them we still have. So we sold two, and we still have eight, and that's true regardless of the method that we're using. The dollars associated with those units, 398, right, have to be split between what we sold, the two units we sold, and the eight units we have left. But as you'll see, we have different numbers depending on the method that we follow. 
cost of goods sold, our expense, under FIFO is 60, under LIFO is 90, and under weighted average is 79.60. So since cost of goods sold, 60, 90, or 79.60, is different under each assumption, the income statement will report different income or profit figures depending on the assumption chosen by the company. So here's a comparative income statement for each of the three methods. Assuming we sold the paddles for 50 bucks a piece, we would have sales of $100. Now, we get three different net income figures if we follow through after sales with the rest of the information. We see that sales, operating expenses, and re other revenues and expenses are the same regardless of the method that we choose. But everything else is different. Okay, Cost of goods sold is different, which means we have different gross profits. We have different income from operations. We have different income before income taxes. And we have different income taxes. And obviously different net incomes. So let's look at this. In periods when the cost of our inventory is going up, which was the case for Carl. It went from 30 to 40 to 42 to 45, right? When periods uh, of cost rising for inventory, net, uh, FIFO is going to give us the highest net income. We see that 24.50. LIFO is going to give us the lowest net income, $3.50. And weighted average, typically, is somewhere in between. Okay. Why? Well, FIFO, first in, first out, we expense the oldest units first, which are also the cheapest units. And since our expense is the smallest, our income is the highest. LIFO, we expense the most recent ones. That's the cookie jar, right? The most recent ones are the most expensive, which means our expense cost of goods sold is the highest and our net income then is the lowest and obviously we're expensing the average cost and weighted average so we get some figure that's in between the other two so obviously looking at this right in periods of rising cost man I say I'm going with FIFO right I'm going with that mouse from Great American Tale but that's not necessarily the best thing. Okay. Yes, it does show us the highest net income, but there are two other methods, and people use the other methods. So why? Why would they do that? Let's take a look at LIFO. Right? Why choose LIFO? LIFO, last in, first out, gives us the lowest profit figure. We look the worst when we use LIFO, in this case, right? where, pr where prices are going up for the inventory. It really has to do with this right here, okay? the income taxes. Now you see the difference in FIFO income tax and LIFO income tax numbers, right? 1050 and 150, that's $9 difference. That doesn't seem like a big deal, that $9 difference, right? Well, let's take a look at Target's income statement for the year ended February 3rd, 2018. Okay. Uh, here we have a number okay, which says that for the year 2017 basically that their sales were $71,879 well that doesn't seem to be right targets huge right and that's not right because if you look up here on the left it says that these statements are in millions right they're in millions so that means that that 71,879 is actually 71 billion 879 million dollars. Well, that seems to make a little bit more sense, right? So, if our statements, right, for Carl's here, right, the difference of 9 uh, that could Right? For some companies, right, when we're talking billion-dollar companies, that could be something like 9 
million dollars. And that's huge. That's a big difference. Okay. So there are some other factors. Obviously, there's more to this than just this simple uh, tax piece. But that's one of the main reasons that companies like to, to use LIFO. So, in summary, purchasing. The amount companies have to pay for inventory changes over time due largely to market forces. So, what I'm paying for these paddles or oars, right, is going to change. It's not always going to stay the same. The cost of replacing inventory may rise or fall over time. When a company sells a product, it must match the cost of the product to the revenues generated from the sale. This is the matching principle, or what some we refer to, to also as the expense recognition principle. Sometimes, however, companies are unable to specifically identify the cost of an inventory item that is sold, and if we can't specifically identify, we have some assumptions to follow. And this is why companies need to apply a cost flow assumption. FIFO, expense the oldest items first. That's the conveyor belt idea. LIFO, expense the newest items first. That's your cookie jar. And then the weighted average method. Find the average cost and expense using it. That's where we shake them all up, mix them all together, like our ball pit, and find the average cost. So this is uh, an additional thing that we run into when we are looking at merchandising businesses, right? We got to account for our inventory cost as it comes in and goes out of our business. And these cost flow assumptions are uh, a big factor in looking at company financial statements. We need to understand what methods they're using. So, as always,